Hi, my name is Dr. Christina Connolly, and welcome again to our MCPS video series, Waymaking. Our goal is to help families make their way through many of the emotional challenges that we are faced with today. I have with me today two guests that work for Our Minds Matter. First, we have Ms. Laura Beth Levitt, who is the program manager, and Ms. Katherine Royston, who is the MCPS program coordinator. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Dr. Connolly. All right, so for our first question, I wanna turn it over to Laura Beth. Can you share what is Our Minds Matter? That's a great question. Our Minds Matter is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2012, and we formally went by the name of Josh Anderson Foundation to honor the legacy of our executive director's younger brother, who died by suicide. Our program is really an upstream suicide prevention model based on resiliency research and the power of peer-to-peer -peer influence among teens. We provide the framework, curriculum, and support to student-led clubs and their club sponsors to help change their school culture around mental health. We currently have 60 active clubs, primarily located in the greater Metro DC area. In addition, we even support um, clubs around the country and even a few clubs internationally. Right now, Our Minds Matter is working with eight Montgomery Public High Schools and hoping to work with all Montgomery Public High Schools thanks to a partnership with the Devin C. Rubin Scene Foundation located in Montgomery County. All right, thank you, thank you. And so then my next question is for Catherine. Why is Our Minds Matter important in the Montgomery County Public Schools? So I would say that Our Minds Matter is important for all schools in general, but having grown up in Montgomery County and I'm a product of the Montgomery County Public School education system, I really understand the unique pressures that students in this high academic achieving environment face. Um, and so, I think that students now having experiencing a unique period of attending classes online, of being away from their peers, experiencing some isolation, this is a time when people are starting to talk more about mental health and realizing really the importance of community and supporting one another and reaching out for help. And so at this time, bringing this club model to MCPS is an opportunity to change the school culture around mental health, to talk about the stigma, to talk about that it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to not be okay. And so our club focuses on four main pillars. Those are encouraging help-seeking behavior, promoting social connectedness, promoting self-care and healthy habits, and encouraging pro-social skills. And so these are all things that can benefit MCPS students and hopefully will be a good thing for them to move on into their journey in life with. Okay, so, and thank you for that information. I mean, it's good for, I think, our families and for our students to know about, you know, the that we're developing these gloves here in the county and that, you know, and I was glad to hear you talk about, you know, the four pillars in terms of how students are engaged within um, these clubs. And so as we all know, right now we are in a virtual environment as we are filming these, um, this video. And so can you describe just so how do the clubs work um, within a virtual environment? And can you share um, some of the virtual activities um, that the clubs um, are conducting? Yeah, so since March, we've adapted our curriculum and our program to be able to be delivered on online platforms. And so we've modified many of our existing activities and added new activities on. Um, and these are to be held with club, by club leaders for their entire club, but also with the help of a trusted adult who is their club sponsor. Um, and so recently we have held the first part of our back to school training and we gave specific tips and guidelines and templates for students to be able to run their clubs online. And we've been very fortunate to have a team of wonderful high school student interns who helped us this summer to really take some of our curriculum and develop that so that they have even recorded themselves delivering these activities. We put it on our YouTube page and so we're encouraging our new clubs and our existing clubs who hadn't previously held their clubs online 
to really empower them and show them how they can lead these activities. Thank you, though, and thank you for that, Anne, because um, I did participate in some of your virtual Wednesday meetings that you had over the summer, and I think it was a great opportunity um, for our students to still engage in conversations around mental health, even though we are not um, currently in a physical building, and once schools do open up um, to continue um, these efforts um, within MCPS so that students have a place where um, they can be student leaders. Um, and continue to engage in advocacy efforts to reduce the stigma of mental health um, within our student population. I mean, we have just received so much um, in terms of um, conversations on Instagram and Twitter for our students in mental health. And even our um, student member of the board has been having conversations around mental health um, on his Twitter page. So, you know, it's really important that we continue to have this and continue to support students who want to engage in these conversations conversations. So then my next question is, so do you have suggestions or feedback for families and students um, to help them um, engage in resiliency and coping during this crisis? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Connolly. I think we've heard a lot lately about like sticking to a routine as vital during this time and creating some type of routine. Um, we're tr really trying to emphasize um, with our clubs also to set goals and be consistent to foster an environment for connection, but for families, um, you know, you can have your routine with school and work, but also building in time for play, relaxation and recharging helps. Um, it helps people look forward to something um, on a daily basis. I mean, I know Catherine and myself like to give each other pats on the back, virtual pats on the back, um, but also to give ourselves um, a lot of grace and allow that um, as we are not doing business as usual. Um, and so we got to take care of ourselves. We got to fill our cup um, and then reaching out to others in our community. Uh, the system of support really allows us to rely on each other um, when we need help. And the great thing about Montgomery County is you all are doing a lot of great things such as this to really build awareness and build that community of support. Um, also, we have um, so many mental health resources listed on our website at www.ourmindsmatter.org um, for any outside help. And as Catherine said, it's okay to ask for help um, because we're all going through a challenging time right now. Right. And so, and thank you, because yes, um, as we talk to our families about it, you know, it's okay to not be okay, but also what can we do to support them in terms of coping and building resiliency and helping the, the families and our students um, during this time is, is just key. So thank you for that. And so, and I want to thank Laura, Beth, and Catherine for your time to be with us today. And as always, we want to thank our viewers for joining us for Waymaking. To send us additional questions and topics to discuss, um, please visit the link on your screen. And also, please go to our YouTube playlist to find additional shows in our series. And please join us next time on MCPS Waymaking. <laughs>